having acted short term to deal with our recession. CNBC, first in business worldwide. Welcome back. The outlook for the mortgage market taking a hit today. The Mortgage Bankers Association cutting its forecast of mortgage originations this year to just over $2 trillion. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's more than $700 billion drop from its previous forecast in March due to lower purchase originations and much lower than expected volumes in the Home Affordable Refinance Program. Meanwhile, Barney Frank, the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, making a big push to have Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac relax mortgage standards for new condominiums. Seems he's saying, oh, look, now joins us in Washington with that part of the story. Diana. Well, Maria, you hear that very sobering news from the mortgage bankers. And while single-family loans make up the bulk of the loan market, condos are a big chunk. And that may be in part why the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee, Barney Frank, and his fellow Democrat, Anthony Weiner, sent this letter to the CEOs of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac saying that their loan restrictions on condos are, quote, just too onerous. Now, Fannie Mae in March said that for loans that were not underwritten through their automated system, and the majority of their loans do go through the automated system, it would no longer guarantee loans on condos in buildings where fewer than 70 percent of the units are sold. They also won't purchase loans in buildings where 15 percent or more of the owners are delinquent on association dues or where one owner has more than 10 percent of the units. Now Freddie Mac will do the same next month. Condo sales nationwide were down 9.4 percent year over year in April compared to 3 percent for single family. Prices down 18 and a half percent on condos, much worse than single family. And there is a 15 month supply of condos on the market compared to a 10 month supply for single family. Now, realtors say the tougher loan standards are, quote, hindering recovery in the condo market. NAR chief economist Lawrence Yun adds, quote, it seems unfair that the mortgage origination should be based on property type rather than individual. Now, I called Fannie Mae for a response, and they said to me in writing, we are working through the issues that Congressman Barney Frank and Anthony Weiner raised in their letter, and we will be responding to them in the near term. We've got much more of this on the blog. Go to it, realtycheck.cnbc.com. Maria. All right, Diana, stay with us. We're bringing in the rest of our panel here to talk more about this. Fred Glick is CEO of U.S. Loans Mortgage. Jack McCabe is CEO of McCabe Research and Consulting. Good to have you all on the program. Thanks for joining us. And, and Jack, let me kick this off with you. Is lowering the percentage of pre-sold condos, creating the same environment that began the housing bubble uh, in the first place. Uh, yes, I'd say so, Maria. The reason that we got into this problem was by lax loan standards and lowering criteria for qualification. That spurred an awful lot of the speculation and overdevelopment. Uh, quite honestly, Representative Frank was one of the chief architects of lowering the standards back in the 90s. And now it appears his solution to the problem is to do the same thing again. I think it's absolutely wrong. And, of course, you put Fannie and Freddie in, in very precarious positions. So how do you walk the line of wanting to create more activity but not taking us back to where we began in terms of uh, uh, fueling a bubble? Well, if that question's for me, Maria, I, I would say right now the big thing that we have to weed through is the amount of foreclosures. We should be focused on stopping the tide of foreclosures and, once again, unemployment that's going to add to it that's really depressing the housing market. And instead of lo and not look at artificial ways to inflate sales and to inflate an artificial market that we're just getting out of. And, and Fred Glick, do you agree with that? Well, here's the whole story. First of all, the key line in uh, what Diana said was that the loan has to be approved through their automated system and then they wouldn't have these increased standards. So basically, 99.9% .9 of all Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans must have an approval in their automated systems. So Chairman Frank, I think, is just kind of doing this as a headline. He knows there's a lot of condominiums in the Boston area, which is uh, his area. And what they really need to do is get back to reality lending as opposed to just coming up with incredibly ridiculous standards that make it impossible to meet, claiming that they're doing it because of market risk when in fact the Fed is the one who's buying most of the loans anyway. Mm -hmm. 
And so, Maria, I yeah, would actually ahead, add into that that you know what he's saying is absolutely correct. I spoke to some folks at Fannie Mae, and they said it's a very small percentage of the loans coming through that would be subject to these higher restrictions now because of the un uh, uh, manual underwriting versus their automated underwriting. But what's more important, I think, now is to, for them to be focused in Congress, especially on not just the conforming loan markets for condo, but the jumbo loans and not and also the conforming jumbos, which are different rates than that original 417,000 that they raised up to 7. 29 in some markets because that's where the crux of the problem going forward is going to be in the mid to the high end of the market. We're seeing a lot of action on the lower end with investors getting in there. It's the mid to higher end, the step up homes where people might need a bigger loan, a bigger mortgage to get into that home that's real trouble. Well, what about, what about in places like Miami and, and Las Vegas where, you know, the complexes, condo complexes are sitting there, but they're virtually empty. How do you stimulate yeah. buying if not through the GSEs? Well, you got to come up with jobs, first of all, to make those places viable for people to want to live in them. Uh, the second phase of this is to be able to get people to actually live in those places and get mortgages. So in those particular markets, it's really important to focus on the jobs. This is all about micro markets. There's parts of the country that are doing great. There's parts of the country that are not. And you can't have one big standard throughout the entire country for everything. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Jack, do you agree? Well, I, I do. I think we have different markets in different stages right now. Without a doubt, Miami is the most overbuilt condominium market in the country, and we have thousands of units to sort through. Most of these were generated through speculative sales using very toxic adjustable rate mortgages. This is going to take years to go through. But I believe that we do need some stimulus to housing without a doubt. I think we've seen the $8,000 first-time homebuyers tax credit has some effect in some different markets. But the biggest problem right now is to stem the foreclosures, and that's not going to happen because we have so many people that are upside down by fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in their homes and what's being proposed right now does not address those foreclosures and we're going to continue to see this flow that's going to put uh, downward pricing pressures on markets. Right, because a lot of people right. think that prices are going to continue to come down. Right, and to add to that, Maria, also, we talked about this on Friday when we originally said that the Obama housing plan's rescue, or the refi part of the rescue plan, was not going to work with mortgage rates above 5%, at 5.5%, and now they're coming out, this mortgage bankers are coming out today saying that the refi plan is in fact not working, that right. they're getting far fewer of these applications through than they ever expected, and that is going to mean more foreclosures going forward. All right, exactly. we will leave it there. Clearly not out of the woods. We appreciate your time. Thank you for this uh, very important Thank discussion. You. We'll see you soon. Right. Up next, we've got the Fast Money final call. Oil price is sliding sharply today. Right now, crude at 66.93 a barrel. Find out why crude could fall even further right after this break.